first, because I got a lot of questions for you. Right. Can you speak to somebody mm -hmm. on the verge? They, they have this huge idea. Right. You know, how dare you dream this big? What makes you, of all people, whoever that you is, myself, you, or any of this audience who may come in contact with this interview, can you speak to the mindset of dreaming big and then just having the balls to go after it? I mean, it's, it's honestly, for my journey, it's always been about faith, right? It's always been about belief in yourself. And, I, you know, in this process, it t and I tell everybody this, when you're building something big, people aren't going to believe you. There's never been a song written, an app built, a movie made that someone said it won't work. You know, it's just never been. It's just, it's never been. I'm, I, you know, every, every successful story has someone that doubted the person. And so it's about believing in yourself and being confident in what you can do. You kind of have to have blinders on. And I say that, and, and I, and I share this with any entrepreneur, cause I see a lot of my friends go through this all the time. Um, the people that you know the best are going to be the least likely to support you in the beginning, right? And, and, it's, and, and a lot of times, it's not that they're hating. Sometimes I call it familiarity bias. There's yep. just a comfortability that we have that, that, a, that, a, that a customer or a consumer doesn't have. There is no bias or judgment. It's just, I see the product, I like it. I see the opportunity to invest, I'm investing. I see the opportunity to you know, buy this or support, I'm going to support. Our friends, the people that we know, they sit back and they're like, mm, and it's okay because eventually they all come around. Everybody's going to come around at one point, but like, I knew you was going to make it. I'm like, yeah, you did, but it doesn't matter. That does, that's not going to matter at that point. So I think I've always been a dreamer, right? I'm a Gemini. Like I've always been like, you know, the person that just, I'm very creative. I like to cook. I like to do all kinds of making anything that I'm able to be creative. I don't care what field it is in. I like decorating. I don't know if people see my office sometimes. They walk in my office like, who decorated your office? I'm like, me. Any opportunity that I have a creative outlet to express myself, I, I'm with it. And fan base definitely gave me that. But it also gave me the opportunity to be ballsy with this. We've had 20 years of social media and African-American people. Black Planet was founded in 2001. It's 2021. Through that 20 years, we know and even white culture and white, white venture capital and white angel investors know that black culture significantly increases the valuation of social media platforms, right? So even going into this, I understood that our value, we take our clapbacks and wit to Twitter, we take our dances to TikTok, we take our memes and our skits to Instagram, right? But we make no money. And then other people come along and we do it for free. And the reason why we do it for free is in hopes of gaining a following. And then hopefully that following will lead to an opportunity, right? Like maybe I'll get on Wild and Out. Maybe I'll get cast in a TV show or a commercial. And there's been some success stories to do that. But just like the mixtape game, and I compare the social media game to the mixtape game, where that era in 2010, 11, and 12, we were giving away so much free music in hopes that that one song catches, but you gave away 40 records. That's how it is with content. We're waiting for that one piece of content to go viral, but we might make 100, 200, 1,000 pieces of content before then. But then when Apple Music came along with subscription services, now you can put your mixtape out and make money day one. Right. And so with something like Fanbase, you can put your content out and make monetization via subscription day one. And that's the reason that it gave me the comfort and energy to do it because I know that if Black culture migrates to Fanbase, right? It'll significantly increase the value of the platform, but it's also monetizing it on the front end. And then we're opening up investment in the seed round for people to invest on the back end because the average person never gets a chance to own a part of it. If I, tell, I ask anybody, I ask you, if you could have invested in Instagram in 2010, knowing what Instagram is today, would you invest? Is that really a question? Exactly. But Instagram didn't know it was going to be Instagram, right? So we don't know what fan base is going to be, except I believe, right? And I understand and I'm, I'm creating the tools and the opportunities for that platform to be a $100 billion company, uh, like all these other unicorns, these mega unicorns. So 
the ability for the users who define and make the platform successful, especially the African American community to have an opportunity to invest, that's groundbreaking. Because hypothetically, if we do have this tremendous, enormous exit, right, that just goes crazy, it'll be the largest distribution of wealth to African American people in the history of this country to make people that put $256 have $700,000 or a million dollars worth of wealth. There's somebody that put five grand, or we have some investors that have invested $75,000, $50,000 in this company. So imagine, that's like $250 million. So you're talking about turning people and distributing wealth to we have over 5,600 investors. That's a massive amount of distribution of wealth, however big the company gets. It's just amazing. What's up guys, thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.